Japanese nuclear regulators have spent more than a year inspecting a geologic fault under a nuclear plant in central Japan. They've concluded that it's not active. We have reached our decision after giving it the most thorough consideration. The Nuclear Regulation Authority issued a final report on this F6 fault under the Oi plant. They say the fault is unlikely to be affected by a nearby active fault. Government standards prohibit the construction of reactors and other key facilities above faults that have the potential to move. The Oi plant is one of seven nuclear plants the regulators have been studying. Regulators concluded last May that a fault under the Tsuruga plant, also in central Japan, has the potential to move. The head of Japan's nuclear regulator says more time is needed to complete safety screening to restart some of the country's reactors. All commercial reactors in Japan are currently offline. Nine nuclear power stations have applied for safety checks by the Nuclear Regulation Authority. The checks are prerequisites for restarts. At an NRA meeting, officials reported on the screenings of the first six power plants. One official said the authority is nearing the end of screenings for basic designs of new safety devices. Another said the checks are in the final stage. But after the meeting, NRA chairman Shinichi Tanaka said the authority needs more time. We need to check the designs of safety devices, and then officials will start work on approving them. The whole screening process will not be finished by the end of March. Tanaka says the authority will hear a variety of opinions from scientific and technology experts before reaching a final conclusion. The mayor of Hakodate City in Hokkaido says he will file a lawsuit to stop the planned construction of the Oma plant on the northern tip of Honshu. Hakodate will be the first local government to become a plaintiff seeking an injunction against a nuclear plant. Toshiki Kudo says after obtaining the city assembly's approval, he will file a suit with the Tokyo District Court next month. He said the city will demand the central government and the plant's operator, Jay Power, halt construction work. The mayor said if an accident were to occur at the planned OMA plant, it would wreak havoc on the city. The facility is being built across a narrow strait in neighboring Aomori Prefecture, 23 kilometers from Hakodate. Regulations require local governments within a 30 kilometer radius of a nuclear plant to have plans in place to evacuate residents in the event of a major accident. Construction work at Oma was suspended after the 2011 accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant, but resumed in October 2012. Jay Power is preparing applications for safety checks required under the government's new safety guidelines. Kudo said the city has asked the central government and J Power on four occasions to hold construction work indefinitely, but the requests have all been rejected. Japan's ranking has fallen in the World Press Freedom Index. Reporters Without Borders downgraded the country by six notches in its annual listing. This follows the passing of the controversial state secrecy law by the Abe administration. The Paris-based media rights watchdog released its 2014 World Press Freedom Index covering 180 countries and territories. 
Japan's ranking fell from 53rd to 59th. The report says that since the Fukushima nuclear disaster in 2011, freelance and foreign journalists have often been denied access to a news conference and information by the government and TEPCO, the plant operator. The group warns that with the Abe government's newly enacted state secrecy law, the fight of freelance reporters will become even more difficult. Other countries to fall in rankings include the United States, which is downgraded from 32nd place to 46th. Edward Snowden, a former national security contractor, leaked documents about the country's uh, data gathering programs. The top eight places are all taken by European nations, with Finland leading the way. Taiwan ranked 50th and South Korea 57th. China is 175th ahead of North Korea at 179th. More people around the world are developing a yen for Japanese cuisine that helped boost exports of Japanese food products to a record high last year. Agriculture Ministry officials say Japan exported foodstuffs worth about $5.4 billion in 2013. That's up 22 percent in yen terms from the previous year. And it's the highest figure since the ministry began keeping records in 1955. Exports of scallops and apples doubled. Shipments of sake, miso paste, and soy sauce each grew nearly 20 percent. Shipments to other parts of Asia accounted for more than 70 percent of Japanese food exports last year. Vietnam imported 36 percent more Japanese food products last year, and exports to Thailand rose 30 percent. It is great news. We will work harder to achieve our goal of expanding food exports to $10 billion by 2020. Hayashi says lingering concerns about food safety after the Fukushima nuclear disaster are causing markets like Hong Kong, Taiwan and China to place restrictions on imports of Japanese foodstuffs. Hayashi says the ministry is asking those markets to remove the restrictions by presenting data showing that Japanese food is safe. People who fled their towns and villages after the nuclear accident in Fukushima have spent nearly three years dreaming of going back. For many, it's not just their homes they miss. They had to leave their pets behind, and those animals are struggling to survive another bitter winter. Itate Village is in the evacuation zone. High radiation levels forced 6,000 residents to leave. And since then, their pets have been going it alone. Around 200 dogs and 400 cats now spend most of their time living without their owners. Tokiko Sato is one of those owners. She's living in Fukushima City temporarily. Because her apartment there doesn't allow pets, she had to leave her dog Taiyo in Itate. Taiyo is the Japanese word meaning sun. Sato chose the name, hoping the dog might share its warmth with others. I feel like I've been separated from my child. I miss Taiyo. I talk to his photo every day, saying things like, good night, or I'm going now. Evacuees are allowed to visit their former homes during daylight hours. Sato goes twice a week to take care of her dog. It's about an hour's drive from Fukushima City. Tayo was waiting eagerly for her. <laughs> she fed him some homemade food. She also took the dog for a walk. But she realized Tayo had lost weight this winter. On every visit, she always leaves a lot of food to keep the dog going until next time. So she wondered why he was losing weight. 
an NHK crew set up an infrared camera to investigate. In the middle of the night, rats showed up. They ate some of the food and took more away with them. Amazingly, they made over 200 raids across the night. By morning, half of the food was gone. Clearly, Tayo wasn't eating enough. Evacuees are not allowed to stay in the village overnight. So, when Tayo senses it's time for Sato to leave, he hides his face. Sato is heartbroken about leaving the dog behind, especially with the rat problem. I feel so sorry for Tayo. I want Itate to be a safe place where people can live with their families as well as with their cats and dogs. That's my dream. This is the third winter since the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. The pets in the village are surviving with only intermittent visits from owners and volunteers. With no hope of life returning to normal soon, the animals and the people who care for them can do little else but keep going and hope Japan for the has best. won permission from the United States to import natural gas from a southern U.S. state. U.S. government officials have now approved all plans for gas exports involving Japanese firms. The Department of Energy gave the go-ahead on Tuesday for a project in the southern state of Louisiana. It involves Japanese trading firms Mitsui and Mitsubishi Corporations, as well as shipping firm Nippon Yusen. If everything goes smoothly, 8 million tons of natural gas will be shipped annually to Japan starting in 2017. The energy will be used in part by Tokyo Electric Power Company for its thermal power plants. Overseas demand for U.S. gas has surged after a shale gas boom in the country boosted output and lowered prices. But Washington limits natural gas exports to countries including Japan that do not have free trade agreements with the U.S. They need to apply to the Energy Department for individual projects. The department okayed three projects for Japan last year. With the latest approval, Japan is now set to import about 17 million tons of U.S. natural gas a year. That would account for nearly 20 percent of the country's natural gas requirements. Hello, my people. I'm Abby Martin, and this is Breaking the Set. Here's a question I never thought I'd ask. What the frack is Mickey Mouse up to in Ohio? See, last month, Radio Disney employees traveled to 26 schools and science centers across the state promoting a program called Rockin' in Ohio. Sounds innocent enough, right? Well, it turns out this initiative was entirely funded by none other than the Ohio Oil and Gas Energy Education Program, which in turn gets its money from, you guessed it, oil and gas companies. During the demonstration, the kids were shown interactive presentations about gas pipelines and encouraged to spread the message about the industry. Now, I'm just guessing here, but I doubt these kids were also taught that infertility and cancer-causing chemicals have been found in fracking water supplies and that the practice is responsible for artificial earthquakes in Youngstown, Ohio. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, the fracking indoctrination of Ohio's youth isn't sitting too well with environmental activists. In fact, one online petition urging Disney's CEO to shut down this program has already gathered over 80,000 signatures. So if you think the Magic Kingdom and oil belong together as well as water and oil, then let's break An energy up. provider that serves our region may be closing some of its nuclear power plants. But company officials say the one in Montgomery County is safe. Exelon officials say the company is considering closing some of its underperforming nuclear generating plants, but the Limerick plant is not on that list. The company says the Limerick plant is a strong performer for the company, and there are no plans to close either unit before the end of their federally licensed operating lives. The units are licensed through 2024 and 2029.